Good morning. Thank you for being flexible with us this morning as both Kevin and I are on vacation today, but we are glad you are with us nonetheless, and we pray you are blessed by our worship of God together. If you are on Facebook or YouTube, let us know that you're there by clicking like, love, or making a comment, hopefully positive, but we are glad you are with us. Thank you so much for being flexible. Let us now join together in our worship of God on this Sunday of Lent. Only the hungry search for bread. Only the thirsty look for water. This is a place for those who are hungry and thirsty in spirit. Only those who ache for meaning will pursue it. Only those who yearn for a deeper life will seek it. This is a place for those who ache and yearn for something more. So let us come today with our hunger and our thirst, our unsatisfied longings, our heartfelt yearnings, and let the God of life satisfy our souls. Our elder this morning is Steve Sunquist, and he will lead us in the opening prayer. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we seek you. We thirst for you. Without your presence, we are as dry and weary land with no water. Together, we lift up our spirits and call on your name that you might abide with us. Bless this, our worship of you, that we might sing for joy under the shadow of your wings. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is Open My Eyes. Kevin will share with us a brief children's sermon message for those who are young or young at heart. Height, 23 feet, 6.2 inches. Canopy, 24 feet, 2.25 inches. 
What's up, Stan? Hi, Al. Every year I check out the growth of apple trees in the orchard, and this tree... this tree's in trouble. What did it do? The problem is what it didn't do. It didn't produce any apples. Again. This is the third year with absolutely zero apples. Is the tree sick? If it is, I can't see how. The bark is fine, the leaves look healthy, the roots are in good order. It's almost as if the tree just doesn't want to produce apples. And that's a problem? Now, this is an orchard. If a tree doesn't produce fruit, it's chopped down to make room for a tree that will. When I turn in this report, someone will be out here with a chainsaw tomorrow. That seems sort of extreme. That's how it works. Has anyone explained that to the tree? Um, what? Has anyone told the tree what will happen if it doesn't pop out a few bushels of apples? It's a tree. You don't talk to trees. And even if you do, trees can't understand you. Says you, I say trees know more than you think, and this tree deserves to hear what's going to happen to it if it doesn't come through with apples. If you want to give it a try, have at it. Thanks. <laughs> apples, bushels, a chainsaw, a chainsaw. <laughs> and you think that accomplished something? Really? Wait for it. Wait for it. How did you... What's the... There's no way that... See there? The tree just needed to understand the situation. Now it's motivated. See you around. But... But... I don't know why I write this in my report. As, prepare, as we prepare to hear the word this morning, let us pray the prayer of illumination to seek God's wisdom on our hearing and understanding of the word. Let us pray. Spirit of all wisdom, together we seek your wisdom and thirst for your word. Gather us with open hearts that the barrenness of Lent might prepare us for the fruitfulness of Easter. In the blessed name of our Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from Isaiah 55, 1 through 9. Hey there, all who are thirsty, come to the water. Are you penniless? Come anyway, buy and eat. Come, buy your drinks, buy wine and milk. Buy without money, everything is free. Why do you spend your money on junk food, your hard-earned cash on cotton candy? Listen to me, listen well, eat only the best. Listen, listen to me, eat well, eat only the best, fill yourself with only the finest. Pay attention, come close now. Listen carefully to my life-giving, life-nourishing words. I'll make a lasting covenant commitment with you, the same that I made with David. Sure, solid, enduring love. I set him up as a witness to the nations, made him a prince and leader to the nations, and now I'm doing it to you. You'll summon nations you've never heard of, and nations you've never heard of you will come running to you because of me, your God, because the Holy of Israel has honored you. Seek God while he's here to be found. Pray to him while he's close at hand. Let the wicked abandon their way of life and the evil their way of thinking. Let them come back to God who is merciful. Come back to our God who is lavish with forgiveness. I don't think the way you think, the way your work isn't the way I work, God's decree. For as the sky soars high above the earth, so the way I work surpasses the way you work. And the way I think is beyond the way you think. I'll be continuing on with uh, two scripture readings this morning. The first is from Psalm 63, verses 1 through 8. God, you're my God. I can't get enough of you. I've worked up such hunger and thirst for God 
traveling across dry and weary deserts. So here I am in the place of worship, eyes open, drinking in your strength and glory. In your generous love, I am really living at last. My lips brim praises like fountains. I bless you every time I take a breath. My arms wave like banners of praise to you. I eat my fill of prime rib and gravy. I smack my lips. It's time to shout praises. If I'm sleepless at midnight, I spend the hours in grateful reflection because you've always stood up for me. I'm free to run and play. I hold on to you for dear life, and you hold me steady as a post. Next, I'll be reading to you from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, verses 1 through 9. About that time, some people came up and told him about the Galileans Pilate had killed while they were at worship, mixing their blood with the blood of sacrifices on the altar. Jesus responded, Do you think those murdered Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans? Not at all. Unless you turn to God, you too will die. And those 18 in Jerusalem the other day, the ones crushed and killed when the Tower of Siloam collapsed and fell on them? Do you think they were worse citizens than all other Jerusalemites? Not at all. Unless you turn to God, you too will die. Then he told him a story. A man and an apple tree planted in his front yard. He came to it expecting to find apples, but there weren't any. He said to his gardener, what's going on here? For three years now, I've come to this tree expecting apples and not one apple have I found. Chop it down. Why waste good ground with it any longer? The gardener said, let's give it another year. I'll dig around it and fertilize, and maybe it will produce next year. If it doesn't, then chop it down. How many of us are familiar with that word suffering? And what does it mean to you? The enslaved Israelites suffered under Egyptian hands. Those Galileans whose blood Pilate mingled with sacrifices certainly suffered. Those who were killed by the Tower of Siloam suffered a brutal tragedy. Humanity suffers. That suffering is common. An inextricable, inextricable part of our human experience but it does not make it any easier to bear. In times of acute suffering, it's as if the whole world shrinks to the parameters of oneself. It's difficult to see the long history of suffering or understand that you're in solidarity with many who went before. The expanse of humanity collapses down to the individual. This similar experience of others are only abstractly and vaguely comforting, when your own heart has been broken to pieces, or if your own cells were mutating. In those agonizing seasons, it can feel like you're the only one who has ever gone through this kind of pain, this kind of tragedy, this kind of hopelessness. Suffering isolates the sufferer into their own vortex, their singular reality, their own umbrella of struggle. Words to describe our suffering fall short, inevitably making cliche that which is deeply personal. All these factors can compound to make for a very lonely journey. The specific kind of suffering we've endured differs across bodies and space and time and seasons of life. And our insufferable experiences vary vastly. From the enslaved Israelites to the Galilean or Galileans to those killed by the tower in Siloam, 
to the antebellum South, to those threatened by wildfires, to parents who have lost children, to those who endure chronic pain, to climate refugees, to being made a widow, to almost dying during childbirth. Suffering is a word that points to a host of experiences and realities and difficulties. There are so many shades and hues to this human predicament, and when you step back, looking at the large swath of human history, all the suffering is pure terror. And many of us, at various points along the way, most of us ask, why? Why me? Why is this my particular story? Why has this happened? Or even, what did I do to deserve this? These are questions without many answers, but it, they're still important questions. It reveals the human search to find and make meaning in and through and despite the pain. It reveals our helplessness and our frustration. It underscores the anger and fear that we all face during these difficult moments of life. Why is a holy question. It is a question that walks us toward Good Friday. It is a question that is an echo of our Lord's question on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Though it can feel like we are alone. In fact, we are far from it. Jesus has always been and always built, will be with us in our moments of suffering. And if Jesus is with us, then God, Spirit, and Christ, the whole body, is with us. In fact, over the course of human history, God has shown up over and over and over again for us. In the book of Exodus, we can find one such example. The miracle of the burning bush can overshadow the reason for the burning bush. We get so caught up in the astonishment of God appearing to us in this mystical form of a burning bush that we might have lost track of the content of the revelation. Basic introductions and pleasantries, God says to Moses, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. And so God takes notice of the Israelites' plight. God sees their misery. God knows their sufferings. God is a witness to the oppression. And so God becomes a burning bush so that this message, this word of hope, can be conveyed. It is worth pausing here. It is worth marinating in the truth that our God sees us, knows us, and has come to us in order that we might be delivered. That is, this is revealed along with the holy name of God, I am who I am. And that is no coincidence. We already know much about the nature of humanity. Here we learn so much about the nature and identity of our God. God is who God is, beyond our comprehension, transcending our world. And yet God takes note of us and has taken every means possible 
including the avenue of becoming human himself to deliver us from our oppression. A God who cannot, will not, and does not stay away. It will not make sense only to be told that God is with you and for you and sees you and knows you and understands your suffering and will never abandon you. One cannot be told this and theoretically assured. One must experience this reality in her soul, in her body, throughout her entire life. I wavered on whether or not to share this, this personal story as we were in the cemetery following my brother's funeral. And as we were there listening to the words of the pastor, as we were preparing to intern my brother into the ground, the pain seemingly impossible, choking us. It was a hot day. And it was a sunny day. I don't remember there being clouds in the sky, but I do remember that out of nowhere, it began to rain. And amidst, and amidst that rain, there came a rainbow all while we were sitting there. For my family, that was God being with us and saying, I am here, I know your pain. Tracking down God is no small thing. As we all know, the, the actual reality of a burning bush. But there are more subtle burning bushes everywhere. And God always seems to be trying to get a hold of us. Little fires alight with God's presence glowing with the radiance of the Spirit's nearness. Messages of hope and strength and solidarity abound. And so, my friends, in this season of Lent, in this time where we are just opening our eyes and searching for God in our midst, searching for that deeper, more profound relationship with God, where have those fires been in your life? What messages of God do you cling to? Have you ever felt the glowing embers of God's self in the hand of a friend who has flown or driven or traveled long and far to be with you during those deep and dark nights? Did you sense God nudging you toward a nap on a rough day? Did someone whisper to you in a tough time? Have you seen God's glowing presence as the sun's rays cast a light on your living room floor and the night slowly becoming dawn? Have you noticed how God somehow nudges your sister eight states away to call you at the right moment when you are already on the brink of tears and you just need someone to listen to your sobs? Have you felt the subtle but holy warmth of an encounter with someone deeply close? Have you ever noticed when the word is preached and the hymns are sung and communion is received, and the room is warm with the body of Christ. There is a, a transcendent yet intimate heat in your ribs, right near your heart, animating every breath of your being. God said to Moses and the Israelites, I am who I am. Meaning, I am a God who sees you. I am a God who knows you. I am a God who loves you. And I can't help but be for you and with you. Our God walks with us through those valleys of death and lightens our way in the darkest of nights. Suffer what we may. God will be our companion. 
God will never leave or forsake you. God, even in death, will wrap the Spirit of God around you as he did with Christ in the depths of the tomb and raise you up to light and life unending. May it be so that the season of Lent is a gift of hope. Amen. Uh, if, if God is inviting you to proclaim your faith, we invite you to profess that faith and let me know uh, when I'm not on vacation. Uh, but let us know so that we can celebrate and support you in the covenant of that journey and that walk with Christ Jesus. Let us now sing for the beauty of the earth. As we spend some time in prayer, lifting up our individual concerns and joys, and the concerns and joys of this community of faith, we share in some time of silent prayer, followed by the pastoral prayer, and then together we will conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Will you please join me now? God of our Lenten journey, you are a good and generous God. Since creation's dawn, you have showered your steadfast love upon us 
that we might flourish and be a blessing to others. Ever since you called your people out of Egypt's bondage, you have promised to walk with us through thick and thin. Sometimes we have followed faithfully. Other times we have stumbled and fallen. In the good times and in the bad ones, your steadfast goodness has been the only true constant in our lives. Thank you for being our God and calling us your children. Because of your goodness to us, we will bless you as long as we live. We will lift up our hands and call upon your name. We confess, merciful Lord, that this journey to which you are, we are called is hard. Together as a family of faith, we have been called into a wilderness where improvisation is the name of the game. We don't know what is around every corner, and we fear what we don't know. We beg your forgiveness for the moments when we forget to trust in your care for our well-being. Forgive us for the moments when we trick ourselves into thinking that there are places we can go where you cannot care for us. Remind us that whether the way be clear or the way be wild, there is no place we can go to escape your providence and protection. We give you thanks abundant, Lord, for the many blessings in our lives that show your steadfast love, for the companionship of friends and family, both new and old, for the warmth and protection of shelter and the provision of food, for access to affordable health care and medical services, for a loving community of faith that guides, upholds, and supports with the gift of the Lenten wilderness that grows us in new ways, for the promise of fruitfulness to come and the opportunity to flourish, we lift up our spirits to you with all thanksgiving and praise, for it is good that we should do so. We rejoice with a gladsome song that we are called your children. Receive our song and praise. Yet, God of all mercy and guidance, surely you know that there are those among us who are in barren places. With all honesty and courage, we lift them to you, O Lord. For those missing friends and family, for those who do not have the warmth of shelter, for those without access to affordable health care and medical services, for those seeking communities of support and protection. For those dealing with war and conflict, we pray especially today for Ukraine and your peace. For this congregation, that we may be led through this wilderness and brought to a place of health, joy, and fruitful discipleship. For those whom we lift up to you, either silently or out loud, we pray. Above all, gracious God, we would ask that you would look upon our places of barrenness as opportunities for your fruitfulness to, be, to abound. Give us courage to see ourselves that way that we might have hope and faith, that we will be led through this wilderness. Remind us, God of coming resurrection, that we do not go into the wilderness to die, but that we go into the wilderness to discover who we are, that we might arrive on the other side with a renewed sense of life. All these things we pray in your Son's name through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hear us now as we pray the prayer that he taught us in one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As most of us know, Jesus is a master storyteller. Often he spoke in parables using everyday situations to help those listening comprehend more about God. In Luke 13, Jesus tells of a man with a barren fig tree in the vineyard. And he was annoyed and eager to cut that tree down and get it carted away. However, the one who cared for this tree and the others in the vineyard pleaded for enough more time and an opportunity to provide rich dirt, fertilized dirt, or manure for that tree. What if we each ask the question of our own life? As individual trees in Christ's vineyard, do we, do I, bear fruit? With thanks for the many ways we can be nurtured and we can nurture within the life of this congregation. For one and for all, may the master gardener strengthen each of us for active and fruitful ministries in the days and years to come. If you'll please hold out your hand and repeat after me, all that I am and all that I have, I give to you, holy God. Let us pray over our offering this morning. All things come from you, God of creation. Please receive these gifts as signs of our desire to be fruitful and productive, parts of your created world. Do not cut us down but offer us opportunities to be pruned and fertilizer, fertilized, proclaimers of life through Jesus. For it is in his name we pray and ask your blessing upon these gifts. Amen. The prophet Isaiah lifts up the image of a great banquet for everyone who thirsts, and all who have no money, as was the custom for a king at his inauguration. God is described as the one who will make an everlasting covenant with his people, just as God did with David long ago. Good news. We have a table that is set before us, and all are invited to share in the gifts of bread and juice, and there is no table cost. Enough places are available for all who will come. The covenant is shown to us in the bread which is broken and the cup which is poured out. Come, for the feast is prepared. All are welcome. May joy and peace be our companion. To prepare for communion, we will be singing the hymn, Let Us Break Bread Together.
on the night that Jesus was betrayed that he took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after they broke bread, Jesus took the cup and he poured it and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us drink of all of it. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we approach your table and we approach this broken bread, we realize that we are in a broken world. We see the war and we see the heartache and the uh, displacement that is in this world. And we know that we too are broken. We feel like at times our life is as broken as the bread that is before us. When we approach your table, let these elements enter into our body and make us whole again. Let your blood that has been shed for us enter into us and make us whole again. Help it make us a beacon of your light in this world. Help it make us servants of your love. May your love become a redemption again. Make your work become complete. Make your grace through these elements and your servants show the world there is a better way. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, this is the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of the new covenant poured out for you. This is the feast of God for the people of God. Will you please join with me in prayer? We rejoice in you, God, our God. We rejoice in your steadfast love and faithfulness, a rich feast for our souls. We rejoice that you shelter us in the shadow of your wings, strong protection against the storms. We rejoice that you are more powerful than the troubles that trouble us. We rejoice that when we wander far from you, losing our way, you do not leave us on our own. You come to us in Jesus, your word made flesh dwelling among us full of grace and truth. O God, who has drawn near, you know us as we are. The songs of praise tell only part of the story. We have wandered down many paths, seeking happiness or glory. We have trusted in lesser gods, looking for safe haven from the dangers that threaten. But the deep hungers are not satisfied. The fears and the anxieties still haunt us. And now we know our souls thirst for you, the living God. Show us your power and your glory. Take our weariness and send your Holy Spirit to renew our hope. Take our fears and grow new courage in us. Take our resignation to the way things are and pull us into your passionate love. Lord Jesus, you meet us in the wilderness of our days and fill us with the bread of life. You meet us in the desert of our loneliness and streams of living water start to flow. We drink deeply of the gift of your presence and we rejoice for you have made us glad. Amen. 
as we head into this new week, just uh, some things for you to consider. And the first is what has given you pause in these Lenten days to stop and savor God's presence? Second, what areas of your life do you need to prune so you can live in the fullness of God's abundance, to live in God's life-giving love? Finally, continue to journey toward and with God this Lent. Simply be and look. Um, just a couple of announcements today. We thank you for being with us and supporting Kevin's family and my family as we are uh, taking off on some much needed vacation time. There isn't much on the calendar this week, so enjoy that extra time for your explorations with God. And finally, we are reaching uh, closer to our goal with the hygiene products for the squeaky clean Lent, and so keep up the good work. Our final hymn this morning will be, Let There Be Peace on Earth. benediction. Go now from the service of worship to the service of God's people near and far. Refreshed by the living water that Jesus offers to you, listen for the parched voices of the least of these. Search out the dry places and the arid souls and become for them a spring of living water. And as you go, may the blessings of the God of life the Christ of love, and the spirit of grace be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Weave, weave, weave us together, weave us together in unity and love. us together, weave us together, together.